Thank you very much, everyone, for um, coming this evening um, to celebrate the, the heritage or, or legacy of, um, uh, of Milton Friedman. Um, uh, my name's Bill Stacey. I'm the chairman of the Lion Rock Institute. And, and every year now, for a number of years, um, the Lion Rock Institute has hosted an event or an occasion um, of some kind to um, celebrate the legacy of Milton Friedman um, with the support of a foundation in his honour that works on furthering his passionate interest in education um, and learning. Um, and it's an event that we're um, always very proud to be associated with. I don't know how many times in the last um, uh, five years, especially since 2008, I've heard the, uh, I've heard the comment, um, gee, we miss Milton Friedman. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we could have a spokesman for the ideas of liberty, the efficacy of the free market, like Milton Friedman, um, to defend those ideas that work so effectively in creating freedom and prosperity, but seem to have been challenged so much by both the political and the economic events um, since 2008, perhaps in particular. Um, and um, tonight we want to explore um, some of that wonderful legacy of Milton Friedman, um, in particular um, in the influence that he's had on countries that were in Eastern Europe and not free and have become significantly more free um, over time. And we have some wonderful speakers with us who will be introduced shortly. Um, I'd just like to, uh, Milton Friedman never shied away from controversy. Um, and he was a brilliant public performer, partly because he was also always so polite. He was never flustered, um, but his answers were witty and intelligent um, and very, very empirical. Um, and I think it's uh, you know, that ability to um, speak with not the authority of a Nobel Prize. Milton Friedman was a very well-known, effective public performer long before someone gave him the tick of the Nobel Prize, but simply the authority of um, his intellect um, and his reasoning um, and a cause that um, you know, many of us here believe was ultimately right. Um, in, in the interest of his belief in debate and controversy, I'd just like to um, uh, show, and I can pass them around, a, a couple of charts that speak to um, our predicament today. And, and as many people know, and we won't be talking about it much today, um, Milton Friedman was famous for um, being the first of the monetarist school um, of economics and a school that operated in the Chicago tradition. And so much of his early contribution um, was through formal economic work on monetary policy and monetary theory. And he told us um, uh, that uh, inflation is always and everywhere a monetary phenomenon. And a corollary of that is that low inflation and deflation is always and everywhere a monetary phenomenon. Um, and um, I just want to show you a chart that shows today um, the global monetary base, which is um, this little purple line, um, at levels where it's just edging along and barely growing today at about 1% or 2%. Um, uh, it, of course, dropped to negative growth um, back in 2010. Um, and suggest to you that whatever your view in the sort of in-house free market um, debates um, about what is the right monetary policy and the right monetary base, we're in a position today that is um, very precarious in terms of the money foundations of the tenuous uh, recovery that we have, and that we could all benefit from um, uh, going back to Friedman's monetary economics and studying that further. Um, and a further chart that shows similar figures, love that echo, for, um, uh, for a country called Japan. Um, to our east, and, and shows that after growth in, the, in M2 collapsed, um, growth in nominal incomes, which is what we all need to spend and live on, collapsed and never recovered. And point out that those two numbers are extremely highly correlated, and R squared for the statisticians of 62%, uh, um, which I think shows that the risks, if we get monetary policy wrong, um, uh, that could emerge. Um, you know, Japan has a declining and aging population where per capita incomes are actually edging up and have been for some time. But in much of the rest of the world um, that is uh, aging before it gets rich, 
um, the risks of getting economic policy wrong are enormous. So I think there are wonderful lessons that we can learn from the practical experience with the ideas of Milton Friedman. And if I could um, uh, introduce you to the introducers to our speakers tonight, and Helen will remind me of who is speaking next. So good evening ladies and gentlemen, and my name is Cherry, and I'm going to introduce the first speaker for tonight's event, which is Yulia Kathan. She's a business development leader and research associate at Kiev School of Economics, a world-class academic research institution. She's also engaged in the launch of the Blue Ocean Strategy Eastern Europe and the Central Asia Regional Institute. In the past, she had advice for the Ministry of Economy of Ukraine as a specialist, as well as spent two years leading international projects at the Ukrainian Reform Support Foundation. She was also the Vice President for the Corporate Relations in ASAC in Kyiv. And Yulia continues to actively participate in the free market community, attending different educational conferences and executive development seminars throughout Central, Eastern Europe and overseas. Yulia Kothan will be speaking on how fragments ideas work in Ukraine, the um, success stories on private provision of goods, as well as how Ukraine can learn from Hong Kong. So please help me welcome Yulia Kothan. It's a long story, I'm so sorry for such a long introduction. And uh, first of all, I'd like really to thank uh, Lion Rock Institute yeah, that's, that's okay. Thank you uh, for invitation, and it's a great pleasure to be here. And to, to, today's morning, I received my presentation because I understand that uh, I, I have no many stories to share with you uh, about how freedom, Milton Friedman's ideas work, work in Ukraine, and you'll see why. But I am here to learn. And thank you all for being here and for this opportunity to learn from you from Hong Kong. That's the best place, like for free market work. So uh, my presentation is more about uh, Ukraine. How it? Uh, how many of you actually have been to Ukraine? <laughs> anybody? Anybody yeah, been to Ukraine? <laughs> oh wow! Fantastic. So what, just just one person. We are a very open country, <laughs> come. <laughs> and uh, a bit about Ukraine, a bit, uh, a bit about uh, some cases which are still work, how these ideas work uh, in rare situations. And I am very open for your questions, so it will be better to, to make this interaction with you. Uh, my favorite uh, quotation of Milton Friedman, you know, so uh, we all, all of us support free market ideas. Here a small video of, uh, about Ukraine to start. It's a very beautiful country. In the same, just small uh, information, a little information. So now there is uh, 46 million of uh, people living in Ukraine. Ten years ago it was uh, 52. So lots of them left the country because of the regime we have. Uh, GDP is, that, that per capita, it's quite sad. Uh, we are the largest territory in Europe and we are already 22 years independent from Soviet Union. Uh, some economic issues, so we are really good in agriculture, we have a lot of, uh, not, not so many like Russia, but we have still a lot of resources, natural resources. We are located in Europe, you can see, and now uh, you know that Milton Friedman was the, the, the first who supported this idea to measure freedom. And I found some uh, information about ratings, where is Ukraine? So, ease of doing business index, we are 137th 
or 185 countries. Not very optimistic. Economic freedom of the world, 122nd out of 141 countries. Um, index of economic freedom, this year was ranked uh, 163rd out of 179, which uh, considered Ukraine considered to be uh, among the squatic zone states. And the global competitiveness index is better, but still not so good. Uh, we have uh, healthcare, education, railways, post services are all provided by public. So uh, we also have very long uh, procedures and bureaucracy things to start business. So here is really paradise in Georgia because you, you can start business easily and you can like you have very you have all opportunities to do that. Um, we have a lot of issues about school choice just to share experience uh, our parents who decide to uh, to send their children to private schools they pay taxes for public schools it's almost impossible in, impossible to have this reimbursement from state then uh, they pay for a private school and private schools are uh, paying taxes even more than uh, for business like the companies which, which, which work for profits and lots of schools are like, like not-for-profit organizations. So it's absolutely weird. But we are doing, uh, we're doing some, some research in our institution, actually, sorry, I represent Key School of Economics. So we are now working in these issues in Ukraine. So we are uh, preparing some legislative initiatives to, to change this law. Um, we have 23 taxes, and which, which is quite quite not, not, not support uh, uh, inter private business and uh, entrepreneurial spirit of, of people. Um, Milton Friedman is always in favor of cutting taxes under any uh, circumstances and for any excuse, for any reason, whatever is possible. So our institution, we are doing research, we are doing policy advices, so we are working this issue. But still, I try to find some, some uh, uh, cases, some situation how these ideas of Milton Friedman uh, work in Ukraine. And I have three examples which are not absolute, uh, like, absolutely applicable for these ideas, but still it's a bit, a bit the same. And first one is um, about uh, private, private providing of public goods. We have uh, in Ukraine we have a unique uh, fountain, which is uh, which was made by a private company, uh, one of uh, Ukrainian billionaires, and uh, it th th this fountain is become became a city key symbol, and it's really now earns money and it's attract a lot of tourists, and you can you can see the video about it. That's a good example. Another story is a bit longer video um, about healthcare. Because uh, our healthcare system is uh, owned by public, and uh, the level, so you should also pay like twice or three times more 
because you pay taxes, of course, and to good to have to receive really quality service, you should pay extra motivation to doctors because they are not motivated to help you and to to to, to, to provide you good service. And now uh, that was really a big step when uh, government. Uh, allows open this niche for a private provider and here is really a, it's a bit longer video i can explain you about how it works and it's, it's comparing public system and private one so uh, pierre decided to have a child and there are two there are two options so that's a public public uh, hospital <laughs> Lots of weird people who offers you weird, weird drugs and there's a map of hospitals. So you have lots of traffic. Always they have limited time. They work. Not very friendly people. Please. And in the same time, that's private private service. Which name? Cinema. Oh, friendly stuff. You understand what's going on? Good conditions, comfortable. That, that's public one. Yeah, they are just texting. How, what's up? How are you? She, she's good. He's not because he's in public hospital. Yeah, that's conditions. They, they, they provide the service and very friendly doctor. She cannot provide two or three needles. Sorry. She will close in five minutes and you need by yourself buy a lot of stuff which is in this absolutely different side of hospital you go there then you come back and it's already closed sorry <laughs> not very optimistic in the same time she's already made great shopping and receive message that she already have results and she can check it online and it's like absolutely different different level of service yeah, and happy and a soul so and after that he still have a lot of sweet drinks yeah so that's another case which which is which is proves that these ideas of, of uh, free market economy they work. And um, what our institution actually uh, does, we uh, have three main directions we work. In. We pr provide uh, policy analysis. We also have educational uh, programs and uh, consultancy services. And we just started uh, pro to work with some uh, municipal local authorities. Uh, providing consulting for them and we have one successful case uh, maybe you know uh, ukraine was um, uh, hosted euro 2012 with poland uh, football you know and we uh, were provided by uefa and in one city we were actually me from from me this was born and me as well uh, that was a host city and we were working with the mayor and uh, we had initiatives to outsource uh, a few services to, to private companies like toilets and Wi-Fi. And it was extremely successful because uh, government, local authorities cannot, cannot provide it really in high quality. And we just uh, create some motivators for uh, companies, uh, local businesses to join this program. We, uh, shared these stamps that uh, we with friendly city and uh, uh, the state uh, recommends a place 
which provides us uh, private uh, that uh, services of toilets and free free wireless or not free but open to tourists. So that's that's the cases. And as I mentioned, and Milton Friedman uh, said that if you want to see capitalism in action, go to Hong Kong. So I'm here. I'm here to more to learn and to implement it. This, this case as this practice in my country because we have lots of work to do. Yeah, we have challenging times, but we are acting. So I'm asking for your support as well, and I'm sure I can learn a lot. And here are some some lessons I discovered. Uh, what we can share, uh, we can uh, try to to promote in our country. Le lessons from Hong Kong and lessons from Milton Friedman. So that's it. Thank you for being here. I'm very open for questions. Thank you. <laughs> and yeah, that's, I, lo I, love, I like the face of Lion Rock Institute and I love that, 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 that cover photo. So, thank you.